Welcome back to the Math Reva, everyone. I'm your host, Daniil. Today we'll be talking about random math stuff, not theory, and chemical unit conversions. The Mishnah in Shabbos says that the Malachos of Kosher and Hatzer tying and untying, only apply according to the Tanakama, to camel drivers and sailors' knots. Rimeir argues and says you're only obligated if the knot requires two hands to untie. Believe it or not, there's an entire branch of math called knot theory, about mathematical knots, a continuous loop of string. Two knots are considered equivalent if they can be deformed into one another without breaking the string or moving it through itself, or if one knot is simply the other, with all of the overs and unders swapped. The knots up to and including seven crossings are considered simple, because there's relatively few knots for each number of crossings. All of these simple crossings are alternating knots, over-under. The simplest of these are the one with no crossings, the unknot, the one with three crossings, the trifoil, and the one with four crossings, the figure eight, a real figure eight, by the way, would degenerate into an unknot. Once you get to eight crossings, the more complex knots, you start seeing non alternating knots, labeled here as n- knots 819, 820, and 821. These knots require you to pull a string over one or two or more strings at once, something that's difficult to do with just one hand. Perhaps it's this class of knots that Rubimir was referring to. You know, something that just occurred to me. There are exactly three six-crossing knots, the only crossing number that has this property. That means that its knots are six, one through three. Get it? Six, thirteen? Mind blown. All right, new topic. We had said back in episode... Wait, hold on a second. This picture's not right. The ship's docked by this point. I just don't like that star with the smirk. Anyway, we said back in episode 1 that Rabbi Lazar Chisma and Rabbi Yochanan Godgida knew how to calculate the drops in the sea. With some simple multiplication, we can do the same. We're going to assume that by drops they meant molecules, since a drop is merely a clump of molecules giving the answer of 1, which isn't very impressive. We're also going to assume that we're dealing with pure salt water and ignore any pollutants displacing by marine specimens and other things that'll mess up the calculations. The first step is to calculate how much ocean there is exactly. The answer is roughly, you might want to sit down for this, 350 quadrillion U.S. gallons, or 1.3 quintillion liters. For our purposes, we'll make use of the fact that this is equivalent to 1.35 billion cubic kilometers, It will make things much easier later on. The next number we'll need is the molecular mass of ocean water. That is, how many grams one mole of ocean water molecules weighs. Chemically, there are many different types of salts, but the one we're concerned with is sodium chloride, your average uh, table salt. Sodium has an atomic mass of 23, and chlorine has an atomic mass of 35.4. Thus, sodium chloride has a molecular mass of 58.4. Water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Thus, the molecular mass of water is 18. Since there is 1,000 grams in a cubic kilogram and 3.5 kilograms of sodium chlorides, basic multiplication yields 60 moles of sodium chlorides. Likewise, the 1,000 kilograms of water contains 55,556 moles. Adding these together yields a grand total of 55,615 moles per 1,003.5 kilograms, or 55.4 moles per kilogram. The last number we need is the density of seawater, which is 1.027 grams per cubic centimeter. Taking these numbers we've gotten, the volume, the mass, and the density. We can now calculate how many molecules there are. We know there are 1.35 billion cubic kilometers of seawater with a density of 1.027 grams per cubic centimeter and a molecular mass of 55.4 moles per kilogram. 
The trick with unit conversions is that whatever unit type on the top of one fraction must be divided by a number of the same unit type such that the units will cancel out. Thus, to multiply the volume by the density, we must convert the volume from cubic kilometers to cubic centimeters by multiplying it by one quadrillion. We can now multiply this by the density to cancel out the cubic centimeters. Um, next, we convert this into kilograms by dividing by 1,000 to cancel out the grams. Then we can multiply this by 55.4 moles to get the number of moles in the ocean. But we need the number of molecules, so we'll then multiply this by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole. Finally, we can hit the equals button. And, drumroll please, 46.2 quatuor decillion. Guess that is a real word. I know that was a little complicated, and I really hope I didn't lose anyone there. Just because of that big calculation, I'm going to keep this video short so that you can digest that. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you did. And next episode, we're going to block out the sun. Yep, you heard me right.